Hi guys, Parker Productions here. Welcome to my Q&A, my first ever Q&A. Really excited to be doing this and I'm really grateful for all your questions that you've sent. I wasn't expecting this many but uh, I, I'm very much honoured so uh, let's get into it, let's answer some. Right, so this first lot is from Brendan Productions. Hiya Brendan, if you're watching. First question you asked me was, what's your favourite Ringo narrated episode? Out of the three, which I have in my mind, The Deputation, Down the Mine and Thomas's Train, it's got to be the latter. Thomas's Train has got to be my favourite. I love the way the story is told and David Mitten's direction and Ringo's narration as a whole is just so rich and warm and inviting. And that ending shot of Thomas being slowly zoomed in on as Henry chuffs off, it's just wonderful. And the music as well, Thomas's happy series one theme is just lovely. Um, down the mine and deputation, just briefly touch upon them, just They've just got great endings. I, I just love it for that reason. And, and Ringo's narration too. So that's really about it. Next question. What's your favourite Tugs app? That's another one that requires choosing one out of three. I've got between Ghosts, Pirate and Big Freeze. Pirate because it was my first ever introduction to Tugs in 2009 when I was browsing YouTube. And I thought, what on earth is this series? Is this like Thomas? And I actually was so confused that Tugs had individual voice actors as opposed to a single narrator. So that really threw my uh, younger mind. But T a Pirate is just a fantastic episode in itself. And it, and it has to be 20 minutes long. Can't be 15. Big Freeze because it's got Ten Cents and Sunshine at the centre, and also got great stakes at play. And Ghosts, because it's just so dramatic, spooky, chilling, and just dramatic. I think I've already said that, but the ending is what sells it for me. Captain Star's ending monologue, which is so perfectly done. I love it. It's great. Right, next question. What other shows did you watch as a kid? That's quite easy to tell you. I am a big fan of both Ragdoll Productions and Jerry Anderson. Love their productions. I'll start with Ragdoll first. I used to watch Rosie and Jim and Brum. And I also used to watch Tots TV on the side because my sister loved it. And the Jerry Anderson shows namely being Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet and the Mistrons, the latter probably beating Thunderbirds by some mile. I was introduced to it on BBC Two. They used to broadcast it in the afternoons in the early 2000s, and that led to me borrowing all the tapes from my local library to do with Thunderbirds or Captain Scarlet. Actually, not so much Captain Scarlet, because they didn't actually have a lot of the Captain Scarlet videos. They only had one of them and I think if I ever spotted the other volumes they were either taken out by other children or something happened to them. But yeah, Thunderbirds was what I was mostly exposed to and loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I was also introduced because on BBC Two they used to show schools programmes for children who were either sick or just didn't want to go to school for some reason and I used to watch those programs because my mum used to tape them on VHS and then show them to me after school and actually despite some of the not very good ones some of them were actually quite good and quite entertaining I remember there was a program about something called pod science which features a cheeky red robot called pod just List in the comments if you actually remember that show like I do, because it was quite entertaining. I liked it. And Kip of the Dog, that's the other show I used to watch as a kid. Loved Martin Clunes, loved the jazz, just brilliant. And that's all I can think of, really. I'm sorry I can't help you out there, but if I think of any more, I shall let you know in the comments below. And on to our last question from Brendan Productions, which is, 
What shows do you watch these days? Anything that takes my fancy, but if I was to name a few, British comedies, or just comedies in general, documentaries, re-comedies, I am quite a big fan of Dad's Army. Definitely a big fan of Dad's Army, and The Inbetweeners as well. I do like The Inbetweeners. So funny. Very relatable. And... Also, I've recently got into a show, another comedy called Shit's Creek, which is a Canadian comedy, and I really like it. I think it's very funny, and I wish more people were watching it. And yeah, documentaries, um, just anything that takes my fancy, really. I'm not too fussy. I'm not fussy on anything that doesn't grab me. So yeah. Right, the next set of questions are from Benji P. He writes, number one... Are you still into Ragdoll production shows? Uh, I will answer your first question. Yes, I am into Ragdoll production shows still, as I've said earlier. Huge fan of Brum, the first two series, that is, with Toya Wilcox narrating. Sorry, but series three onwards does not do it for me. I don't understand the slapstick route that they went down. Uh, but I guess it worked for audiences, so I, I won't judge it too harshly. But as for their current programmes, I am very impressed with In the Night Garden, Abney and Teal, and Twirly Woos in particular. Twirly Woos does feel like a return to their more familiar format of curious young minds exploring the world. I love it. It's brilliant. And to answer your second question, if there's one aspect of the current era of Thomas franchise you absolutely despise... What would it be and why? That would have to be the frenetic nature of the episodes, the bouncing and the oversaturation of the colour grading in the episodes. To choose one out of those three, that would be tough. I'd have to go with the bouncing though. I do not think that it has a place in Thomas to make the engines move around like they're Chuggington or cars or whatever. I absolutely hate it, and I if they get rid of it, I it would improve the show so much. But yeah, that's that's what I think. But thank you, Benji, for your questions. And yes, we must get in touch soon. I don't know whether you have Discord, but I am quite active on there. So look out for my Discord. It should be on my channel. And yeah, we'll we'll take it from there. Next set of questions are from Crane Engine Productions otherwise known as Harvey27, I think he is. So yeah, hi there. Um, thank you for your questions. Your first question is, who or what got you into voice acting? Well, watching Thomas, um, Michael Angelis, one of my all-time heroes. I am absolutely heartbroken that he is gone. And I actually, I actually can't quite believe it that he's left this world. You never think that these people will actually leave. And that probably sounds a bit deep, but you never think that they'll actually leave and that they'll disappear forever. Like, oh, but yeah, we'll, we'll always remember him. And what's been lovely is to see how, how fondly he's been remembered from people that I didn't think would ever be associated with Michelangelis because he led such a quiet profile, in my opinion. But yeah, voice acting, just Thomas and other shows in general, that sort of thing. And watching other fan videos too. That's the other thing, watching fan videos and l loving what they do. So uh, the next question you asked me was, what was it like attending the first Tugs the Exhibition event you went to? That was September 2015 during the unveiling of Boomer event. That was brilliant, that was. And I met so many people. And that was that was an event that changed my fandom experience forever because I actually got to meet some of my heroes in person and talk to them at length about all things to do with Soda Island Forums, Thomas, Tugs, the lot, absolutely anything. And God, it was a good day. I, I loved it. Uh, Top Props was there, in addition to the Star Tugs Trust, as they were then known. Mike, Chris and Owen were f 
fantastic. I love talking to them. It was so good. And yeah, I, I've i been going annually ever since. Your next question reads, which of your favourite Thomas characters would you like to see return to CGI and why? I'd like to see Elizabeth return. I feel she would have a lot of potential for the franchise, particularly how bulgy has been written in the series. He's He's been used to his potential. And I feel Elizabeth was always a character I, I did like. I do like Elizabeth. And I feel that they sort of forgot about her after series 12 or... Ser no, series 11. And she could be used to greater potential for more road versus rail rivalry, in my opinion. And that was the last question from you, Crane Engine Productions. Thank you for your questions. We shall move on to the next ones. So these next set of questions are from Two-Faced Heart Productions. Hmm, I wonder where I've heard of him before. Hi, Ethan, if you're listening. You've asked me, if you had the option to own any prop from Thomas, Tugs or Wind in the Willows, which would it be and why? For Thomas, I'd have to own the original Gage 1, Series 1 to 5 model of Thomas, or a character from the main 8, because I just love the glossy paint that they used on it, and also the proportions of that are the proportions of what I saw during my childhood, so that would be of particular importance to me. For Tugs, Top Hat... Yes, and then I could donate it to the trust or whatever. Uh, and Wind in the Willows, probably I would have to own a prop from uh, probably the Caravan or Badger, model of Badger. I'd have to own a model of Badger or go one step further and own a prop of Toad Hall. That would be great, having the interior of Toad Hall just in your living room would be <laughs> would be brilliant. I'd love that. And your next question is, if you had to be trapped on a desert island with any one engine character from Consider the Following, who would it be and why? So for those who don't know or haven't seen Consider the Following, please do. It is so good. I definitely recommend it. You can watch it on Two-Faced Tart Productions' channel. I'll put a link in the description below. I'd have to go with Boston to answer your question because I enjoy his jokes. I enjoy his gags and stupid puns and his brummy accent and <laughs> just everything. Yeah, Boston would be entertaining to have if you were stuck on a desert island. And to answer your last question, favourite busted song? Well, someone's been observing my music musical tastes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would go with Air Hostess or Shipwrecked in Atlantis. Those are so good. So I love those songs from Busted. Busted is my childhood band. I have loved them ever since I first heard them in 2003. Air Hostess would have to be my favourite because I like, Air Hostess and oh, just playing the guitar and just rocking out to it. It's so cool. And those are my answers to your questions, Ethan. Thank you for asking them. I'll move on to the next ones, but thanks again, mate. Cheers. Uh, this next question is from Coca-Cola. He writes, What is your favourite episode, season and special? I'm presuming he's referring to Thomas. So my favourite Thomas episode, I mean, oh my God, there's like hundreds. But if I had to choose one, it would be Percy's Promise from Series 3. I love that episode. And there's a particular moment that stands out for me as a kid where where the camera looks up at the sky and it's that cloudy grey sky painted by Robert Gold Galliers. And I swear it looks so real as a kid. The painting and the consistency in the clouds. You, I just look up at the real sky above and it would be almost identical and it made Sodor ever more feel like a real place and that's why I appreciate just the whole atmosphere, the rain, the countryside as Percy's storming through it. It's just bloody great. Excuse my language. I love it. 
Favourite series? Series 5, if anybody doesn't know, but I do appreciate the others because they all have their qualities, but if I had to choose one series, Series 5 is the winner because it's just so well made. And it speaks a lot when essentially David Mitten was in charge of the whole shoot when Britt Allcroft was in America and she basically just said, sob the budget, go for the best. And I just love it. It just shows the quality it had. And the fact it used Dolby Surround as the mix, it's brilliant. I wish they'd kept that Dolby Surround for future series, like for series six and seven. They just didn't seem to possess it anymore. I suppose it was just because it was too expensive. And favourite special? Got to be Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. I know the adventure begins would absolute supersede everything, but I count that more as a mini special and as its own thing. So for feature length specials that are 60 minutes long or longer, Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure beats everything. The story, the quality of voice acting and the animation and the visuals and the sound. It was a great moment in 2015 to show how in two years the show had turned itself around from being dull, boring and mundane kiddie fodder to actually being of some deserving quality again. And yeah, what more can I say? Tale of the Brave comes in at a close second though. That definitely comes in a close second, but so does Legend of the Lost Treasure is where it's at. And we've come to our last set of questions for our Q&A. These are from Mr Merlin Fan 2 Thank you, man, for sending in your questions. I really appreciate it. So let's get on with what you've written to me. You've said, what are your favourite Thomas and Friends Series 5 episodes? <laughs> Someone's obviously been listening to me. Um, yeah, Series 5. Uh, my favourite episodes... I mean, all of them? <laughs> Does that count? Um, no, if I had to choose a few, number one stands out for me as Cranky Bugs. Cranky Bugs has to be my favourite out of all of them. But Double Teething Troubles comes in at the second. And Lady Hat's Birthday Party. I love that episode. That was present on my um, Peep Peep Party VHS, which I love. So your next question to me is, what's the best video you voiced in and why? That's a tough question. I mean, I've only voiced in a few fan videos. I mean, I'm really lucky to be voicing in any because I never thought 10 years ago that I would ever have got to have voiced in a fan series. But the best one I would have voiced in, God, either between... Scarlowy 123's Goods Engines video because I had to put on a Ringo Starr type of voice and I'm pleased to say that people liked it, which I'm very grateful to. But the other one that does seem to me like the more appropriate candidate is Trained Assassin Sewed All the Magic Within, which I believe, Mr Merlin Fano 2, you voiced Cranky if I remember rightly which you did a great job of, if I may say so. But yeah, Trained Assassin sewed all the Magic Within series. I got to voice the Fat Controller and Gerald Stanley in it. Only the Fat Controller from episode four, because I think the previous three had been voiced by Mainland Studios and I think Trained Assassin himself at one point. And of course, when they probably couldn't do it anymore, he asked if I could be the Fat Controller. And I said, sure, why not? Because I'd voiced the Fat Controller in another video called uh, The Really Useful Diesel, which is in the playlist on my channel. But the story he wrote to combine the modern Thomas with some of the Magic Railroad lore was really nicely done. And his model work was really good, really good in filming too. So, yeah, when I was asked to play the Fat Controller as well as Gerald Stanley in the series, I remember voicing them both in episode four, which was my first episode into the series. And the way Trained Assassin had managed to build up the tensions between him and... Who's the evil character again? I uh, forget his name. Um, 
Seamus Osborne, that's it. Seamus Osborne, that's it. The way the tensions between those two and and the hijacking of Boko and he drives away. Oh, you've got to watch it. If you haven't watched the series already, you must watch it. It's available on his channel. I'll put a link in the description below. Please watch it because I'm very proud of that series being part of it. And my ending speech as the Fat Controller in the last ever episode, which is episode 9, I gave him a more Churchill-esque speech. And that was actually with the help of uh, my friend Elliot Killick Ward, who's um, who's known in the Thomas fandom. So I had his help for the voice direction on that part. I'm really pleased with how it came out. And also I got to use a better microphone, which I'd rented out the college. So yeah, that would have to be the best video I've voiced in. And I hope that there are better ones to come. So I look, eagerly look forward to those. And let's move on to the next question he asks, which is, who are your top five Tugs characters? That would have to be Top Hat, Ten Cents, Sunshine, Zug and Zoran in that order. Top Hat is my number one because <laughs> he's just, he's just like Lord Snooty. I just I just love characters that are so arrogant and haughty and snooty towards others, but equally get brought down to size when they get too far above their station. I I love characters like that. Uh, they seem to be my favourite ones because that's partly the reason why James and Sir Handel are my favourite characters in Thomas. So Top Hat, yeah, and also he has some of the best lines. You know, oh, I say hello. Oh, it's, oh, it's so funny. Uh, and Ten Cents would be my second one because, you know, he's just a jovial character. He's got that lovely jovial thing about him and he's cheeky and he's just a good protagonist. I, 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 I like Ten Cents. And equally Sunshine. Uh, Sunshine is a bit of a grafter. He likes no shirking from duties. He He's good. Zug, because... Him and Zip are just so weedly and snivelly towards Zoran and uh, they try and think that they're helping but they're not. And Zug seems to be the one that captures my attention, just being a snivelling little weasel. <laughs> uh, and Zoran um, is, would be in my top five because um, he, uh, well, enough said really. Zoran has some of the best lines in the show with his and and there is only one Zoran and that is Chris Tullock. So if ever there's a Tugs revival, Chris Tullock has to be in there. No exceptions, no alternatives, no substitutes. Tullock all the way. And your next question is who were your inspirations into joining the fandom? Ah, oh, I'm so glad you asked me this. SI 3D films SIF and Roll Along Thomas and the other YouTube Thomas fans around the time of 2007 and 2009 because that's when I got into the Thomas, observing the Thomas fandom. I didn't create a channel. I didn't create my channel until 2016, as you'll know, because I, I always felt from when I'd first discovered that there were other people like me that I wouldn't be able to match up to their same quality and standards. So it was partly my uh, insecurity in that sense that uh, held back me starting a channel for so long. But SI3D Films was the first person that I came across when I discovered the Thomas fandom on YouTube. And I have actually had can say that I've had the pleasure of meeting him in real life at one of the Tugs events. And he's very humble actually. He's very humble and he didn't say lots, but whenever I asked him a question, he always gave an answer, a nice answer back. And that was a, that was a very big moment inside for me. I, yeah, I, yeah, it was just one of those moments again, meeting your heroes and ju them just being wonderful back to you. So childhood dream come true, really. Um, so yeah, SI3D Films, I loved his Trains remakes and I did miss him when he when he went, when he closed down all of his channels 
and uh, but was delighted when he came back as uh, Thomas and Friends Audio Archives and as Streaking Steam Productions, as he later renamed himself. So I'm glad he recognises his legacy in the Thomas fandom, and that he hopefully gets enjoyment out the Thomas videos these days. So I'm really happy to see him back and that he's he's decided to stay. SIF, because, same points again, I love their audio productions and their Tugs audio productions. Some of them are just so funny, and I always, whenever I'm at the Tugs events, if I see them there, I always chat to them about audio, you know, some of the audio stories they made or some of the blog posts, and they're always really friendly and, and, and nice to talk to. And they enjoy it when people bring up some of their content, and it means a lot to them. So, Roll Along Thomas, the blog which literally was the main news hub for Thomas fans everywhere. I got to meet Milard in person, uh, the guy who ran it, and um, he's nice. I told him how much I loved Roll Along Thomas, and he was delighted. So, um, yeah, they, w they would be the main inspirations to join the fandom. And also the other users, such as Dan Snell with his Adventures on Sodor series. God, that would be the number one nostalgic series, or one of the, num one of the top nostalgic series, uh, fan series for me. And the last question we have, which is what's the best meetup you've been to and why? Hmm, the best meetup? God, one? Uh, I've had I've had a few. Um, SVR Galas, uh, Seven Valley Railway Steam Galas. The first one I went to, which was in March 2019, with 84F Studios, TK Productions and Lady Vera, or Old Vera Dearest. That was the first Steam Gala that I went to. Considering that I've been an avid fan of the Seven Valley for a long while, it was the first ever gala that I went to. And it that was that was a great time because I had um I was sort of stressed with coursework at the time, doing my degree and and Georgia eighty four studios invited me and said, you know, come along. So I said, Alright, I'll train it over there in the morning. So I did, and um, and I gotta say, it was just wonderful. Just something about it, just propping your head on the edge of a carriage window and just watching the scenery, the Sem Valley scenery run by, was a perfect tonic to a stressful week. I loved it, and uh, we then attended the Autumn Steam Gala. So I'd been a volunteer for a few months at that point. And we had quite a big lineup of fans. Had Smudger, PKMN, Two Faced Art Productions, Tom Allmark from SIF, and all the rest I'd mentioned before, as well as um, Ten Lay Ten had appeared. Uh, Neil, that was great meeting him in person. We had a, we had a blast. That was a very hardcore day of steam garlering. I was up from 7am and I didn't get to bed until midnight because we went on the night steam excursions that they run down the line. That was just brilliant. That was a brilliant night. Um, the other meet best meetup I've been to was at the um, Star Tugs Big Weekend 2018, August 2018. That was brilliant. Two days of Tug's Bliss. We got to meet Chris Tullock in person. He and his partner arrived and was given all anecdotes of the different props. You know, he'd point to C Rogue and say, Oh, Spike made that. Oh, um, Dave, Dave ran that past me. And it was just wonderful to see him. Just the fact that someone official from the Tug's legacy had actually approved the exhibition was just great. And the evening events later those two days the Saturday and the Sunday it was lovely I can remember very vividly how we watched um I believe it was a 20 minute version of Warrior only a work print of Warrior and as soon as it finished and because there was no music at all to it at all no sound whatsoever as we sort of played the Tugs theme in our heads and it finished one of the staff Startug staff uh, said, oh, what's that over there? And we all turned, bearing in mind we were all crammed in the coach looking at the TV screen, 
and we just saw Warrior over in the corner shaking his stack and moving his eyes around. And the fact we just watched Warrior on the screen, suddenly we see the actual model himself come to life. That was a glorious moment and I will never forget it. And the next day was even better because we got to uh, we got to watch more footage during the evening event. It was a private event, of course, so you know nobody could really uh, share any details about it. But we got to watch another piece of footage, which was a promo to market the series in 1988 thereabouts, because there was very early shot footage. So they were still making the series. And I remember watching that and drawing quite a beautiful moment in the video. I just looked around the exhibition, at the models, at the staff, at the fans, all of us gathered in the coach. And I just thought, wow, Tugs is very much alive as it was back in the day when they were making it. And I thought to think there was a point where Tugs actually was just a forgotten piece of 80s children's media. And now has been brought back into public consciousness. Oh, that was a very cathartic, lovely moment to savour. I will always savour that moment. It was just a very good weekend there, and that's why I would class the August 2018 big weekend event at the Star Tugs exhibition at the Midland Railway as up there in one of the best meetups. To be with other fans, chatting with other fans, and the staff are lovely as always, and... It was just a great weekend, definitely my favourite out of the ones I've been. Even the 30th anniversary ones, and they were pretty special. So yeah, once coronavirus is cleared up and life returns to normal as it was pre-March, I'm very much looking forward to the next Tugs the Exhibition events that they hold, so I can meet fellow fans and meet up with some old friends and make some new ones. The friends that I've made since going to Tugs and SVR galas have been priceless. I could never replace any of the friends that I've made and they're all very special to me. So to all my friends who I've met, I hope you're doing well and I really hope once this is all cleared up that we can meet again. And that includes you, Mr Merlin Fano too. Cheers, buddy. And that's it. That's all the questions. I've answered every single one that has been sent to me. I hope you like my answers. I hope I've entertained you for the past uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> and I didn't expect it to run on this long, but hey-ho. I hope you're satisfied with the answers. And thank you very much for your questions you've all sent me. I'm re I really appreciate it. So I hope to do another one of these for another significant milestone of my channel. And before I close this video, I'd like to give a very special thank you to all those who helped me achieve 300 subscribers. I hope this has been a video special enough to celebrate it. I've really enjoyed doing this video. I get such a lot of enjoyment out of the channel, so thank you guys, you're incredible and I hope to produce more videos in the next few weeks. And just stay tuned. This is Parker Productions, signing out. Bye.